Morning, Coach. We'll get started here with Nick Fierro. Uh, hi, Dave. Um, with uh, Jake Elliott, he's uh, looks like he's going through maybe a little bit of a tough time right now. Missed another um, extra point uh, this game. And w how do you work with with kickers? Uh, it, it seems like everybody goes through a uh, phase like that. Every kicker at some point in his career. Uh, how do you work with kickers like that? And can you tell when it's a confidence issue, maybe as opposed to something else, mechanical? Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I know, obviously, there's a lot of questions about that. We expect to make every single kick that we go out there and have the opportunity to make. I know I feel that way. I know Jake feels the same way. Obviously, we don't expect to miss uh, PATs. Um, it is two in the last two weeks. That being said, I think, you know, he's still playing really well for us overall. He had a nice, I uh, thought it, that 52-yard field goal in the beginning of the game was really good. Uh, hit a great ball on that. I thought that was a tough kick going that direction in that stadium on that day. So I was proud of that. Uh, but I would say at the end of the day, I mean, I think when we evaluate him, I look at it in a much bigger sense than just any one kick or any one game or any two weeks put together. Um, and throughout the course of this season, you know, he had the 52-yarder there. He's made every kick but one underneath, underneath or every field goal but one underneath 52 yards. And he does have the two missed PATs there. But so I think overall, he's still in a good spot. Obviously, we're always working to improve. So I think, you know, obviously this week we'll continue to do what we do, just work on our rhythm and striking the ball, making good contact with that thing, making sure we get that PAT cleaned up. But I got a lot of confidence in him still, and, uh, and I feel good about where he's at. Go ahead, Dave, and then Paul. Hey, Dave, on Jalen Rager's punt return touchdown, uh, what did you see specifically from him, and what can that do for a, a rookie's confidence having that big play? Yeah, no, I was really excited for him to have that opportunity there in the game and then obviously to take advantage of it, uh, you know, in the beginning of the play. I mean, th there's a lot of parts to that play, obviously. Anytime you have a big return like that, you got to have a lot of really good blocking. Um, you know, I think on the left side of the on the left side of the screen or the, the field, uh, Graylin Arnold and Avante Maddox dominated the double team of that gunner on the outside, which gave him a chance to catch that ball out in space right there. He did put it on the ground. I thought his eyes came off the catch a little bit right there at the finish. He started looking at the return a little early what we call running before catching. Um, but uh, he obviously picked the ball back up. And then on the right side of the field, on that right gunner over there, Jaquette and uh, Kayvon Wallace did a good job getting him uh, washed down inside. And Duke Riley came in and finished him off there. And then Kayvon actually came back around and had another big block for us. It really helped start the thing. And then I think, uh, you know, it, it was a good play, too, because there's a lot of things that went into it. Singleton was out on the field. He was playing because Davion Taylor went down. And then we had Richard Rogers on the field who was out there, and he was playing because uh, um, T.J. Edwards had gone down in the game right there. So we had a bunch of guys out there. They were still competing. I think it was seven minutes left in the game. The offense had had the big score on that fourth down play to Greg Ward in the corner of the end zone. We kicked off. I think we tackled him on the 23. Our defense did a great job going three and out. And then uh, we had the opportunity to have them punting backed up off the 21-yard line there where we could be a little bit more aggressive. We were able to get Jalen in the game, which was big. And uh, and then I think the last couple blocks on that side, Sean Bradley and Corey Clement uh, finished those last couple blocks, and then Jalen made those couple guys miss. So obviously a great play, fun to be a part of. Uh, the most important thing for us is winning the football game, so we're disappointed we didn't get that done. But uh, I was definitely happy for those guys on that play. Those guys have worked really hard all year long. I know there was a question last week about scoring touchdowns in the return game. And uh, I said, we're going to just keep swinging the bat. And I think those guys have done that. Uh, they're a resilient group. They work really hard. They compete every play, uh, no matter what the score is on the scoreboard. And uh, so I'm proud of them and happy for them that they were able to uh, make that play. Go ahead, Paul, and then John. Dave, Jalen obviously missed a chunk of the season. But uh, I mean, you brought him along slowly as a return guy. You haven't put him in a lot of. Uh, uh, negative situations where he's up against his own goal line. Um, what's your confidence level in his catching ability right now uh, as far as using him anytime, anywhere? Yeah, no, I got a lot of confidence in him. I mean, I still see us using the combination of both Greg Ward and Jalen. Uh, I mean, I think Jalen's done a great job. Obviously, you know, he's got to continue to work on catching the football. He's put two on the ground now this season for us. Uh, 
And uh, so he's got to continue to work on that. There's no question about that. You know, he was out for five weeks there. During that five weeks, he had that thumb injury, so he wasn't able to catch balls. Um, we weren't able to catch a pass, much less a punt, uh, during those five weeks. And then we brought him back in, and we got him going. Um, and then when he came back, he was also playing, I think, the last, whatever, five weeks that we've been playing, or he's been playing again. I think he's played 77% of the offensive snaps or something like that. So he's definitely got a lot on his plate. Um, and then, obviously, the punt return role. So I think we'll just try to manage him the best we can and keep trying to take advantage of, obviously, his skill set and his ability to make big plays for us. Um, at the same time, just manage his load. And uh, I, think I still see Greg being a part of that and going back there and helping us. He's done a great job making a lot of really good decisions and getting positive yards for us also. So I feel good about both those guys being a part of this thing and helping each other out. Go ahead, John, and then Mike. Hey, Dave, uh, getting back to the PAT thing, and, and not just Jake, around the league, there were uh, a number of missed PATs this week. Now that there's pretty large sample size since it got moved back, uh, have you noticed, have you studied, uh, is it more difficult to make a, a PAT than a 33-yard field goal? It's not a ton of 33-yard field goals. but Yeah, no, I would say that's probably the same number if you added them all together. I mean, it just – Kicks are just so different individually, kick to kick. Like I think I've said before, whether it's inside or outside, it's a, you know early in the season, late in the season. There's weather, there's no weather. It's on grass or it's on field turf. So I would say that there's a lot of variables to that. I mean, I think like when you look at Jake uh, specifically, which is really the guy I obviously spend the most time watching. But, you know, I think his first year he might have been like high 93% on PATs. Obviously, we had a bunch of them that year. That was 2017. And then I think uh, I think the next couple of years, I want to say he was right in that 94% range. Um, so maybe it would come up. But... You know, if you throw in one more miss or one more make, it's obviously going to skew those numbers. Um, and then I think right now, obviously, sitting just a little bit below that with the two misses. Um, but, you know, if you project him making the rest of those things throughout the rest of the year, I think his numbers would be pretty much the same. And I think that's pretty close to what the league average is right there, that 93, 94 percentile. Um, and I think it's kind of held fairly steady there over the last couple of years. I could be wrong on that, but... I don't know. That's kind of where I see the PAT numbers. Go ahead, Mike, and then Zach. Hey, Dave. Um, you said that Davian Taylor, I mean, Davian Taylor obviously left the game with a knee injury, but you got to see him for 12 games. He's a high draft pick, and we haven't really seen him a lot on defense. What did he bring to the special teams group? This year. Yeah, no, I, I really admire him and got a lot of respect for him. I mean, he came in here. I think there's a lot of expectations on him. And, uh, he, you know, he wasn't playing a ton on the defensive side of the football, but he really embraced his role as a special teams player. He had a lot to learn even in that phase of the game. And uh, since the day he got here, he's done really nothing but work extremely hard. I mean, I wish everybody could see how hard he works. He, he comes in for extra time. We're, when the, when the protocols allowed him to come in, he'd come in, meet one-on-one. -on -one. He's one of the first guys now. I mean, we'd have to do a lot of it virtually, but he's one of the first guys to get online and uh, go through the game with me virtually. He'll uh, call me every evening after practice, and he has a couple questions for me. Uh, I thought, you know, as the season's gone along, he, he ended up making more and more plays for us. And I thought you could see he could see the fruits of his labor, really. Um, but I think he's a really good story. He's a really good person. He works really hard at it. This game's really important to him. I think it's well documented that, you know, he's got – He's behind the curve a little bit, and just in terms of number of reps playing football. But uh, he's got he's got a great skill set and a lot of ability, and uh, I really think he's got a he's got a tremendous amount of potential, and his future is going to be really bright. Obviously, I was disappointed for him more than anybody that he got hurt and had the injury. Um, but uh, I look forward to what he'll do. I, I'm really excited about him. Zach, and then Les. Hey, Dave, uh, you cited uh, Jalen's off offensive workload there, um, but uh, Greg Ward has taken more snaps than him these past two weeks. What is holding you back at this point from making Jalen the full-time punt return? 
Yeah, no, I'll just stay with the same answer I said. We're going to balance those guys out the best we can. Uh, I don't think you find too many punt returners who are the primary punt returners with that big of an offensive role. I could be wrong in that, but I think it's really difficult to do. Um, and my decision making is to put our football team in the best possible uh, position that we can put them in on any given play. So we'll continue to balance the rep load. I think some of it has to do with uh, the amount of opportunity that you're going to have on any given return, not all returns are the same. I think I've talked about that in the last handful of weeks uh, with you guys in these meetings here. Um, and when we think we have an opportunity for him to make an impact in the game, we'll try to get him in there as much as we can. Um, but I think that's ultimately what it goes down to. Let's go ahead, Les, and then Bo. Hey, Dave. Uh, you mentioned uh, Jalen Rager. Uh, initially dropping the ball on the 73 yarder, which of course isn't optimal, but I know you look at these things, you know, very, very closely. It just seems to me, and I know a lot of people mentioned this on Twitter, the great Deshaun Jackson punt return started with him dropping the ball and picking it up. Does that mess up the coverage at all? Does that, it, it, it seems like I've seen a lot of those where the punt is initially muffed and the guy picks it up and suddenly there's a lot of room there. Uh, yeah, no, I wasn't here. I, yeah, I wasn't here for that D-Jack play, but I certainly saw it. And uh, yeah, I think you've probably seen it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely seen it. And uh, when I saw the ball ground, go on the ground, to be on, and after he picked it up, to be honest with you, I thought the exact same thing. Uh, that play came into my mind. Um, but yeah, no, I, don't, I wouldn't disagree with what you're saying. I think there is a tendency sometimes when the ball goes on the ground to to kind of just think that the play's almost over or now you can, you know, if you're in coverage, now you can just crowd the football um, and some of those guys lose sight of their responsibility maybe just a little bit. I think that's probably the case. Um, so I don't know if that helped us or not. I think we still had a bunch of really good blocks and all that stuff. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, and then I will say just a handful of coaches and I were talking about really the same topic you're asking about. And I think even some of the defensive guys feels like that can happen when a uh, running back fumbles the ball back in the backfield or a snap goes awry and then all of a sudden a guy picks it up and then he ends up, you know, a quarterback picks it back up and ends up getting somebody open deep. Maybe some of those defenders let their guard down. So I think what you're saying is probably, yeah, there's some degree of truth to that. Um, whether or not that affected the play, I can't really tell. But um, we're happy that we're happy with the result, but not every part of the play. There's still a lot of room for improvement for us. Thank you. Go ahead, Bo. Uh, Dave, what goes into deciding which side of the hash you want to kick the the PAT on, and and not uh, you know taking it from right down the middle? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, I think Jake feels just maybe a little bit more comfortable on that left hash if he had to pick. Uh, that being said, we also look at all the numbers. I got a large, a large book of you know all his kicks, not only from games but also practice. And I would say, gosh, it's like slightly higher from the left left hash. I mean, it's like one percent higher uh, from the left hash. Uh, that being said, I think if you look closely, there's times in games where we, we have actually kicked some of those kicks from the right hash. So some of it also has to do with the weather and the conditions, whether it's a left to right wind or right to left wind. Um, but so the wind and weather has some to do with it. But obviously, if everything's neutral or close to neutral, then we'd pick the left hash. Okay. Thanks, Coach.